right, so now we are joined by Ken Rogers, who's running for the Port Commission, position five. So go ahead with a two-minute introduction. Okay. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to come and speak in front of you and hopefully earn your endorsement for the Port of Seattle Commission, position number five. Um, typically, folks uh, want to know why they want to do this. And it's a function of several things, but not the least of which is I am a resident of the South King County, and I've been very closely involved with those local communities on their uh, relationships with the Port of Seattle as well as the airport. I have 30 years in the aviation industry. Uh, I've, of those 30 years, 21 of those years have I spent as a labor representative for the Airline Pilots Association in a variety of roles. For the last uh, 10 years, I've been a board member of Delta Airlines. For the last eight years, I've been a shareholder elected. I'm leaving that uh, position at the end of June, and after that I will be um, separating from Delta. And I want to use my experience and knowledge and passion to try to contribute to the community. And the Port of Seattle Commission position is a nice fit with my experience and my background. And as I mentioned before, as a resident of the area around the airport, I'm, I'm keenly aware of some of the relationships that benefit from improvement between those uh, between the port and those local communities because they, they very much need all the help they can get uh, in their economic development. And I think the port could uh, improve its partnerships with those communities. That said, the port of Seattle is not, of course, not all about the airport. It's about the shipping and fisheries terminal and the marines and some real estate and the rest. But they need roughly 77% of the revenue of the way for next year's forecast to come from. Uh, Seattle Tacoma International Airport. There hasn't been, to my knowledge, there hasn't been anyone on the Port Commission for quite some time with extensive airline background. And um, I understand the issues at that at the airport that came out. That, that's something that I can bring to the Commission. So you see my time's up. Great, thank you. So now we have four prepared questions. Feel free to turn over the uh, <coughs> If you'd like to read along, we will read them out loud. These are two minute answers. I think we left off. Uh, John, do you want to do number one? Okay, uh, what is your plan to keep the Port of Seattle competitive when other ports offer similar services at lower cost? Okay, so I guess that question speaks directly to the shipping portion of the Port of Seattle as opposed to the aggregate. So, the first, um, my first response to that would be to scrutinize the budget thoroughly. Step one is when they cost redundancies. That's pretty straightforward, and that applies to almost any organization. The rest of it is to find out what differentiates us from the other from these competitors and capitalize on it. It's not a uh, not particularly new idea either. It's going to be very different, however, going forward because of the Puget Sound Alliance with Seattle and Tacoma merging their or joining their forces for cargo shipment. So I think that, for, that creates a, presents a whole new dynamic on thinking about how the Port of Seattle operates on its container shipping um, at the seaport. And that needs to be um, thought through in a way that is, um, contemplates these, these competitive issues. And also it creates some synergy between Tacoma and Seattle so we can actually compete in our respective ports, but we, not, not against each other, of course, but we compete together against Competition around the West Coast and Canada. So I would I would highlight and emphasize <coughs> the synergies to be had by that port alliance and make sure that we are out in front of that, contemplating um, these other ports that, that don't have the same complexities on service transportation and the rest <coughs> um, that they can have as an advantage over us. We should be able to figure out a way between Seattle and Tacoma to really offer a product that is more competitive and desirable than what we had at Long Beach or
public outreach and community engagement was insufficient. I don't think that anybody was surprised that there was unhappiness in the public at large by the outcome of that. I think it could have been um, mitigated by starting relationships with the, with the interested parties earlier in the process instead of as late as it was. So um, it's very, it, on the one hand, it's very complex, on the other hand, it's very simple, right? The, the actual terms of the lease are perhaps pretty complex. But you've got an organization, the Port of Seattle, whose responsibility it is, is to steward the resources that it, it's charging. Those resources are not only financial, but they're also physical. It has to do with the port, the, the dock itself. But the other part of that is to be sensitive toward environmental concerns, right? So none of those stand alone. And that's not the issue in the end. The issue in the end is the port is supposed to represent the people of the region, specifically the people of King County who elect them. Many, most, a lot, several of those people are going to have strong opinions about the decision the port's going to make. It seems logical to me that you want to involve them earlier than later in the process. You would try to be, you want to be as transparent as you possibly could, given the business constraints around whatever the negotiations might be. So I think it's an unfortunate outcome. It could have been handled better. And I'm not familiar with the details of you know, the terms of the lease to be able to comment on whether it's lucrative enough or not. I do know that there were several people that spoke at the, at the meeting at the airport. Um, they spoke in favor of this because it was important to them for uh, jobs. So I think there's a balance to be had. Any of these high profile, sensitive issues deals with now or it's going to deal with in the future. And the best way to get around, the best way to handle that is to have a really thorough governance system, governance process that is considered of these disparate interests and is able to you know, apply these interests to the hard work of making the decision because in the end that's what has to happen. And the best way to do that is to make sure all of the constituents involved have an opportunity to express their position uh, earlier or later. And that's my opinion. I hope that's responsive. Joseph, on the court. What changes or reforms do you support for the Port Commission itself? As I mentioned earlier, step one, greater public outreach and community involvement. I think that doesn't have to be limited to uh, Terminal 5 and you know, the FOSS shelfies. Um, in fact, I would even offer, although they don't vote in King County because they don't live here, uh, many of the people outside of King County are affected by operations, not just the seaport, but the airport. And there ought to be a way to to listen to those constituents and incorporate their concerns and their views just because they happen to live in Sonoma County or Pierce County or they're on, in eastern Washington. That doesn't mean that they shouldn't be um, thought of as a constituent just because they don't happen to live in King County to vote in a particular election. And I think it's a, I couldn't have made a better example of the, uh, the dispute this summer with the longshore workers in the uh, PMA because that affected not just it certainly affected people beyond King County. So the whole notion that now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the port should have intervened in that, right? But the port has an opportunity to participate in that in an intelligent and informed way. And I think there absent legal considerations that I may not be aware of, there was an opportunity for some of the, some people around the port to perhaps engage or encourage uh, mutually satisfying resolution just to get the darn thing done because I think it, my opinion is a drug on far longer than it needed to. Um, I spent, like I said, 21 years doing a variety of labor relations and contract negotiations. And at some point in each negotiation you know about what the answer needs to be. And once both sides are pretty much on the same page and you're just down to the details, there's just no reason to drag it out. Nobody benefits from that. I'm not convinced that anybody benefited from the, uh, that dispute this summer. I think the port perhaps could have had a, a, maybe not necessarily an advocacy role, but they could have uh, used a bully pulpit, perhaps maybe add some of that. Uh, Janet, number four. Do you believe we have achieved full transparency in the port's contracting and compensation practices, and where do you see po possibilities for further improvement? Yeah, so I think my earlier answer perhaps speaks to this question. I think that the ability exists to find information. I think it could be made more easily available. Um, the website's quite good, and the meetings are lightly attended by the public, except in the event of something that's very high profile, like the terminal five piece. But the meetings really are 
not, um, don't attract the kind of crowd that you would want to be a representative opinion of uh, interest around a particular issue. I think that there are probably ways, and again, you know, I would, my intent would be to work collaboratively with the, the other commissioners if I'm elected. I don't have any, any intention of going in there and, and being, you know, particularly aggressive and trying to be disruptive. But I would say this, I think the governance around the operation of Port of Seattle would benefit from a little refining. For example, perhaps um, a committee structure of some sort, not to add layers of bureaucracy, but to just process better. Maybe there could be a way, um, you know, taking into account the, the open public open meeting requirements. Maybe there'd be a way to take bite-sized pieces of issues that come up at the ports so with the respective you know constituents in the community to participate on that particular issue as opposed to the broader agenda. So I would I would place some emphasis early on in finding out if there are ways to do the business of the port in a way that's more linear and perhaps more inclusive, but not at the expense of being bureaucratic. Great, so now we'll open it up to follow-up questions. Um, these are one-minute answers. I have one, I've got Joseph and Evan. Um, so you're running against Bill Bryant. I don't know that for sure. Well, you don't know that for, the, for sure, so he may not be running for re-election. I you would have to ask him. Okay. You know well, he, I believe he's at least filed and has raised some money. So assuming he's your opponent, uh, he is a Republican, even though it's a non-partisan race. He has expressed interest in running for governor, uh, which means not only is he not, not eligible for our endorsement, we are keenly interested in making sure he doesn't get reelected to anything. So my question is, uh, how would you go about beating him? These are one minute. One minute, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know that it's specific to an individual. I mean, you know, I don't have a first case commission of Ryan. I think the question you're asking is how do you, how does a, a new person, somebody that's not an incumbent, um, compete effectively and prevail in an election where you're running against somebody that's got quite a bit of um, name recognition and has uh, presence and certainly has been there a lot. So that's, it's not a, that's not an easy goal to find. My, my opinion has come full circle. This, of course, is an outlier to the right? So it's an individual people look. But the reality of this is, it's a down ballot election, so it's it's deep in the ballot format. And typically, people aren't very familiar with or not terribly familiar with the people running for these positions. In some ways, it's it's a little bit like a perhaps a, a judicial election where folks just aren't knowledgeable, and they depend heavily on the endorsement side and the voters' pamphlet. I think to make what you know as close to an informed decision as they can. So the answer to your question is, I've got to get good endorsements, lots of them. And you know, better ones. How about that? I, I think that's. If I had, I got times up. If I only had a minute for an answer, that would be to get more endorsements. <laughs> there we go. All right, Joseph then. So, since we are a democratic organization and you're seeking our endorsement, why do you consider yourself a Democrat? Um, I voted Democrat in every election since I moved here over 30 years ago. I was a PCO in the 33rd uh, last year. I've been a labor representative. For, like I said, 21 years. Uh, I've contributed to uh, Senator Campbell, Senator Murray campaigns. Um, I, think I've, I think I've expressed my um, affinity with most of the Democratic views since I lived here. I, I consider myself a moderate Democrat. I believe in social justice, I believe in equal rights, I believe in you know, most of the tenets of the Democratic uh, Party. I also believe it's important to be able to pay for things. So on that, that's what dragged me closer to the monitor thing. Because we have several examples of, this, of our state legislature, or through the ballot initiative, providing um, some legislation that hasn't been funded. And I just don't, that's not workable. You can't make policy that way. That's incorrect. Great. So Evan and Mary and John. Jim. 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 Periodically, the uh, city of Seattle or the state has support to contribute to large projects, uh, Bertha being one example of what has a major role there. Uh, I'm interested in, to some extent, your opinions about the port contributing to local Seattle projects. I'm thinking of the heavy haul network that we're trying to create right now for the trade truck drivers uh, who have a whole other set of challenges. 
that you may be familiar with. Uh, what is your view on the port's contribution to local projects, especially with respect to the heavy haul network and what those unknown costs might be? Yeah, the cost is a big piece, right? Anything at that scale. Um, I think the port has a unique position because, especially now that the Puget Sound Alliance, the seaport from Seattle, pretty much going to be joined with the hip. The transportation corridor, not just from Seattle south, but also from Tacoma north and east to connect with the warehouse area down there is a huge piece. And so almost anybody that's driven through Seattle in the last several years understands the congestion that can occur at and around that's the stadium area. And that's where all of the shipping and all of the rail and all of the traffic has to go through. So there are lots of people, lots of competing interests for how that gets done and who pays for what. So I think the port's in a unique position to be very um, measured and uh, bipartisan, I guess, if you will, or nonpartisan on how that gets accomplished. Because it's all about moving the freight or moving the passengers from the airport to the cruise terminal and back and forth. And it's about getting the material from off of the water and into the system, whether it's on the rails or on the highways. And that just has to go through there. So it's compelling to get it done. It just needs to be thoughtful and on a schedule and scale that everybody can embrace. Because I, I don't think there's a lot of dispute that whether it's a need or not. It's a function of how you meet the need and how you apportion the payment. And I think the port is uniquely positioned because it can, it can look at the whole package. Cool. So I, I think I, we can fit all three of you in, Mary and John and Janet. Okay. Uh, a couple short questions, and I'm not really knowledgeable here. Is, is affiliate businesses are a major employer 
and I wonder what your thoughts are about the airport's role in workforce development and efforts to create a living wage. So, I am absolutely supportive of a living wage, for sure. I think that in some ways, the $15 an hour, uh, as it's referred to, initiative is well-intentioned and the execution becomes very difficult. The mayor's committee was really thorough in looking at how to implement that in a structured schedule so that that minimum amount of impact. I think in the end, what that attempts to do, I, as I said, I completely support the intent of that, is to provide a higher standard of living for people that are now at a low poverty level. And I'm not convinced that the way it's being implemented right now is going to end up there, but I'm optimistic that it will. And I think that once we see some of the data that the study at the University of Washington is doing to monitor how this is implemented, it will really help guide whether that policy needs any changes or not. So the short answer is I support it, but I support what it's supposed to do. If it doesn't end up doing that, then it needs to be changed. And I don't know what that change needs to be because we don't know how much, how close it is to be on target. That's, I'm not trying to skirt the issue, it's just a very complex topic that is oftentimes broken down to sound bites, which is truly unfortunate because it's a really important piece of policy. Great. So we're about out of time. If you want to take 30 seconds for a closing statement. Uh, again, you know, thank you so much for, for the opportunity to do this. I think this is absolutely critical in helping voters stay informed on, um, especially the lower down ballot elections. They just, you know, there's just not the opportunity to have a conversation, not enough opportunity to have a conversation on some of these um, comparatively smaller, less headline grabbing um, offices. So thank you for that. And I hope from, you know, at some point I can maybe come back and speak to your legislative district meeting as a work Great. Thank you very Thank much. You.